Let's go over this endangered species essay. For this essay, you will be writing two paragraphs, two power-packed, powerful, important paragraphs. Now, the first thing you want to do is start a folder on your computer and label it endangered species. Next, of course, you've already locked down the topic from the list that you wanted to choose, and you've made sure that nobody else has locked down that species. Now it's time to go pick some pictures, and you will want to pick four pictures that are positive in nature. Remember, for this assignment, the tone of the essay is positive. You are going to persuade the reader by showing positive images of the animal in the process of being rescued. So you want a picture of a human being helping the animal. You want a picture of babies. Many people feel protective toward baby animals and might be inspired to jump on the bandwagon with you and, and become inspired to help this animal. We want to see a picture of the animal in its habitat. Where does this animal live? And then finally, the final image is going to be something that really brings the message home and convinces the reader once and for all that this animal is worthy of rescue. Okay, remember, never use a logo. Not at all. Why? Because we are not persuading people with a logo. We are persuading people with images of the animal in action, the animal in its habitat. If you use a logo, there will be a five-point deduction from your grade. Just make sure that you don't do that. Step number one, first, you got the animal from the list. You got it locked down. Now we're ready to, we've got our images. Now we're ready to move on. And you're going to check on the definitive source for that animal, which means World Wildlife Federation or some official scientific website, National Geographic, or some website like that. You don't want buffalo.com. You want something that is an official website that will tell you information about this particular species. You'll be creating a, an easy bib citation for that site by copying the URL and you've been through that process. You've seen the easy bib tutorials and so you'll want to create a citation for each of the resources that you find to substantiate your essay. Now in that, that process of selecting images, I like to get more than I need and that way I've got plenty to choose from when I get ready to write the essay. Now remember, Pixabay is a wonderful resource for free images. I went to Pixabay and typed in American Bison. Now these are the, the paid for, but down here we have the free uploads. Now, what do I want to find? I want to find buffalo that inspire the reader to care. That one, not so much. It doesn't make me want to protect that. Seeing this little family, buffalo and the little baby and the parents, that is an inspiring photo. So I'm going to want to download that for a free upload and save it to my folder. And so I go through the process of selecting images of bison that are positive in nature, that make me care about that animal. And for this free download, you'll see this little uh, Pixabay license. It's free for commercial use and it's free for our educational purposes. And so we don't need to cite that in our works cited. If I go to Google and I search for American bison, and I click on images, and I select one of these images, then yes, I do need to create a citation for that image. And how do I do that? I would go to where the image is located, and as before, as we've done in EasyBib before, I will copy this, paste it over into EasyBib, and create a citation. Now I'm ready for step three, and it's time to research information about my animal that I have chosen. And I want to type into Google, 
what measures are being taken to save this animal. Remember, the name of the game for this particular essay is Save the. We want to save them. I want to inspire the reader to join with me in saving them. So I need to find some information about where the animal lives, what the animal looks like, what's being done to help this animal. Each time I look at one of those articles, of course, I'll add that to my EasyBib project. Now I'm ready to go on to step four. And this are the sentence breakdown and where the images go for the paragraph. I simply follow this template and write the essay in my own words according to this template. Here's the template for paragraph two. Sentence number one, sentence number two, and so forth. Now I'm ready to write my essay. I've gone through my folder and I've selected the image that I think is the most powerful image for the introduction, for my title image. Why did I pick this one? Well, I think this one looks mysterious. It just makes the reader want to be drawn into the world of this bison. Now, this is completely up to you. You select the picture that you think most aptly sells your ideas. Remember, positive tone. You're going to be writing more than one draft for this as you proofread it and make sure that it's all perfect. And that's why I show several different word counts. You get a word count each time you revise the essay. So as you can see, the final word count for my essay is 271 words. But the process of getting to that final 271 words included a number of rough drafts. Now I'm going to, I fixed that picture up. I kind of got excited. I went to picture format and I just did, you know, a little frame around it. And I did that by just doing quick styles, selecting the frame I like. Remember, if I'm going to frame one of them up, I have to frame all of them up so that the essay is consistent. Now here's my little paragraph. And I have a image of the beautiful little bison. It's a little large, isn't it? There we go. All right, pretty. And then this one. It's too crowded in here. Now this one I like because this shows where the bison lives and it shows a picture of somebody helping the bison. So that lets the reader place themselves into the picture. So the reader thinks, wow, you know, look, these people are helping this bison. So I'm going to adjust this and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my images placed where I want them to go. I'm going to make this bigger now. But I move things around a little bit. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to justify these margins. Do you all know how to do that? Well, I'm going to do it one little bit at a time because I don't want to throw this already delicate spacing off. So I'm going to go over here and I click this. And look, it takes it all out to the margin. See how pretty that looks? It just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Now do the second paragraph. And notice that I'm only using I references. I want to help this. If you use, if we have, if I see we, you, us, our, it's going to be a point deduction. Always use first person or third person objective. What is third person objective? It is facts. Here is a fact. And that fact is documented right there. If it's my opinion, it's always I. Never ever use you, we, us. You're not preaching to people. You're sharing your position, your story, your ideas. And then I'm going to end it with this pretty little picture right here. And won't that make the reader excited to help save these little animals? Here's my little works cited, and again, you can follow those easy bib tutorials. And there's my two paragraphs. Aren't isn't that beautiful? I'm going to fix it all up, make sure that it's all correctly written, and then I'm going to save it as a PDF, and I'm going to submit it in the Submit Here tab. Pretty as can be, huh? 
That concludes this tutorial.